Thank you. 
Krishna намерен возвратиться в свою обитель. And the Lord confirms to Buddha that this is his plan, that he is planning to return to his own abode in the spiritual sky. Господь подтвердил Буддове свои планы вернуться в свою верховную высшую обитель. So, impersonalists, Mayavadis in particular, they cannot understand the distinction between the Supreme Lord and the other different demigods. Impersonalists and Mayavadis не могут понять разницу между Верховным Господом и Полубогами. It was mentioned here how Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, they also were appreciating that the Lord's pastimes in this world had been completed and that he could now return to his own abode. You remember how at the beginning of the tenth canto we have Lord Brahma and the other demigods all going to pray to the Lord to come and help them to reduce the burden on the earth planet. Mother Bumi, person of the deity of the earth planet, was feeling the burden of so many kshatriyas on her planet. And she approached Lord Brahma for help, and Lord Brahma then approached Lord Vishnu. Мать Буни, которая является олицетворением Земли, чувствовала огромное бремя от перенаселявших ее, от перенаселявших ее обшатриев, и поэтому она обратилась к Господу Брахме за помощью, а тот, в свою очередь, обратился к Господу Вишну. So it's very clear that there is some hierarchy, there is some management structure within the universe. И на этом примере мы видим, что во Вселенной тоже существует определенная иерархия, определенная система управления. In person, Maya Vadis, they generally consider that all the gods are one. Maya Vadis обычно считают, что все боги это есть одно. And then it's a very pervasive this kind of understanding. It's very common among ordinary people, common people. И среди обычных людей также эта концепция очень распространена. You can go to some temples and you will see they have all the gods there. В некоторых храмах можно увидеть, что на алтаре представлены все различные боги и полубоги. Of course, not all of them, because there's 33, 30, 330 million. So, but they have, they come close to it. You know, they have a lot of them. Не все, конечно, поскольку полубогов 33 миллиона, но примерно нужно это приближается к этому количеству. И в своем понимании они также утверждают, что в конце концов все есть одно, все есть Брахма. So of course, Prabhupada gave us his pranam mantra uh, that he is preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya to deliver the world from impersonalism and voidism. Потому что до Шива Прабхупада никому не удалось распространить 
проводить учение по сопрочитанию и освободить западные страны от философии и персонализма и пустоты. Потому что вступая на духовный путь, люди были убеждены, что это и есть высшая философия от этого и персонализма и пустоты. On the material platform, we also see that it's not all one. А даже в материальном мире мы видим, что на самом деле не все едино. Of course, sometimes they promote the, the idea, you know, equal rights for everyone and everyone's the same. But we see everyone is not the same. Иногда пропагандируются такие идеи, как равные права для всех, все едины, но на самом деле мы видим, что не, не все едины. Прабхупад noticed when he came to Moscow in 1971. At that time, of course, Moscow was, and Russia, Russia was still part of USSR and it was embracing the communist philosophy. В 1971 году, когда Шила Павпада посетил Москву, он кое-что заметил. Тогда, конечно, Россия была еще частью СССР и от доктрины социализма. So Prabhupada said, people say that everyone is equal, but he says one person is sweeping the road and another person is riding in the big car. So where is the equality? Шила Прабхупада тогда сказал, они утверждают, что все едины и равноправны, но посмотрите, один человек подметает улицы, а другой разъезжает на машине. Так где же это единство? Даже в Китае, где до сих пор социализм, все равно люди знают, что мы ну, не равны. In order to put things in order to keep everything going nicely, there has to be some management structure. Чтобы был порядок, чтобы все дела делались, нужны нужна все равно какая-то иерархия, какая-то управленческая система. So every state in the world, you know, there's a management structure. There's the head of state, and then there's ministers who work under him directly. And then there's the mass of people. В каждой стране мира мы видим управленческую структуру. Есть президент, глава государства, есть министры, которые подчиняются ему, и затем есть просто народные массы. I think a couple of years ago they had Trump, the the pre, pre, uh, president of the USA, come to Singapore to meet the leader of Korea. What's his name? Пару лет назад состоялась встреча президента Америки Трампа и руководителя Северной Кореи Ким Чен Ына в Гонконге и туда на эту встречу в Сингапуре и туда на эту встречу они прибыли со своей многочисленной свитой, секретарями, помощниками и другими. Each of the the Americans and the Koreans they occupied huge hotels. They filled the hotels. There were so many of them. Так много было у них спутников и американцев и корейцев, что они заняли вообще все отели. And of course, the, of the, the ending of it was Trump and Kim came together and they each signed this document agreeing to certain conditions and cooperation. И результатом этой встречи было подписание Трампом и Кимом каких-то определенных договоренностей и соглашений. But it took many days of negotiating and talking between the different heads of the different ministers, the different officials representing each country. They would talk. It wasn't all done by Trump and Kim. 
you know, they were the leaders. They just sat back and they had all of these people working under them. Но чтобы прийти к подписанию этих соглашений, по ним потребовалось много дней, а когда все эти секретари, помощники, министры договаривались друг с другом, приходили там к каким-то взаимным соглашениям, и когда они уже всю подготовительную работу сделали, тогда Трампу и Ким осталось только подписать. Они сами не, не принимали участие. And they shake hands and they sign and all the newspapers, reporters and cameras are all there filming these two. But they each had a lot of people behind them. This material world is just a per perfected reflection of what's going on in the higher realms. There are many, we say 33 crore, 330 million different demigods overseeing the different affairs of the universe. Some of the demigods will be more prominent than others. Конечно, у некоторых полубогов больше влияния и ответственности, чем у других. And above all of them, there is this, the supreme lord. There are the 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 name of the, the lords who come from the the spiritual world. И над всеми ними стоит верховный господь, который приходит из духовного мира. The original supreme personality of Godhead is Lord Sri Krishna, and he expands himself as Lord Vishnu. Изначально верховная личность Бога это Господь Кришна, и из него уже исходит экспансия в форме Господа Вишну. So sometimes people think that Vishnu is a Vishnu, and Krishna are also just like the other gods of the material world. И некоторые люди принимают Кришну и Вишну за обычных полубогов, таких же, как другие в этой вселенной. They don't understand the difference that there's a material realm and a spiritual realm. Они не понимают, что есть материальный уровень и духовный уровень. So in the spiritual realm, Lord Sri Krishna exists with all of his different income, all of his different forms. В духовной обители Господь Кришна вечно пребывает со своими энергиями и экспансиями. And there's a Vaikuntha planets, unlimited number of Vaikuntha planets. Есть бесчисленное множество планет Вайкунхи. Where of course Lord Vishnu resides. Где пребывает Господь Вишну? In all of his different forms. Во своих разнообразных формах. So. The material, this material world is the realm of Maya, but there's no Maya in the spiritual world. The spiritual world is, is pure and perfect. And everything is beautiful eternally there. But the material world is just the opposite. Under the realm of Maya, there is the influence of time which causes the destruction of everything in this world. And even the demigods are also under the influence of this time. Can be affected by Maya. Даже полубоги подвержены влиянию времени и могут быть подвержены влиянию Майи. The demigods are simply 
jiva certain living entities who have acquired some piety and achieved the position of demigods. Полубогие это просто дживы, обычные живые существа, которые накупили определенное благочестие, которое позволило им достичь положения полубогов. Just like in, the, in, in this world, we see some people have great success in their material endeavors. They may, may acquire great fame or great wealth due to some piety, due to some past deeds, past good deeds. Of 
his different expansions, like Lord Vishnu. When he needs help, when he needs something, something to be taken care of within the universe, then it will be done by Lord Vishnu. Uh, Just like creation, the, the, the Lord Vishnu's Purusha avatars, they perform the function of creation. And different avatars who appear in the world, they also come from Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu resides in each universe, it's Garbhodaka Shaya Vishnu. So from him the different incarnations appear. And sometimes the Lord arranges to empower an ordinary living entity to perform wonderful activities. Empowering a living entity to perform, this is called Shaktya Vesha Avatars. And there are many Shaktya Vesha Avatars. Lord Buddha is like one Shakya Vesha avatar. He was empowered to mislead the atheist people, to get them to follow him and to stop killing animals. And Saparasara was also a Shakya Vesha avatar. He was empowered to kill the Kshatriya races 21 times. It's quite a contrast between the two avatars. Parasurama is so much killing and violence and Lord Buddha is coming to stop all the violence. So the Lord arranges to empower these living entities to perform these different tasks on his behalf. Таким образом, Господь Кришна наделяет различных живых существ особыми полномочиями и силами для того, чтобы они выполняли определенные задачи по его намыслу. And then similarly, Vyasadeva is also empowered. He was empowered to write books. Vyasadeva также был наделен полномочиями написать ведические писания. Srila Vyasadeva understood that the Kali Yuga is beginning and in the Kali Yuga people have very bad memories. Everything had to be written down. Previously when people wanted to learn the scriptures, they would go to the Guru's ashram, stay there with the Guru in his ashram, and the Guru would recite the scriptures to them. But Srila Vyasadeva understood that in the Kali Yuga, people will be very fallen, it will be very difficult for them to dedicate themselves like that. Но Весадева знал, что с наступлением Кали Юки люди станут очень плачевыми, и для них очень сложно будет таким образом посвятить себя получению знания. And because of their sinful activities and material attachments, their memory will be very bad, very poor. Therefore, Srila Vyasadeva began to 
dictate the scriptures and Ganesh took up the work to write everything down. А из-за материальных привязанностей и верховных реакций память людей Калиюги также очень ослабе, должна, должна была очень ослабеть, и поэтому Весадева начал надиктовывать Шримад Бхагавад ведические писания, а Ганеша их записывал. So this is Shri Vyasadeva. He was empowered to write scriptures for people in this. А таким образом Весадева был наделен особой силой записать писания для людей современной эпохи. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita it is stated, Kali Yuga Dharma Hari Nam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vininahi Tara Pravarta. That in the Kali Yuga the process for self-realization is Sankirtan. В читании Чаритамрити сказано, что процессом самосознания для Кали-йоги является Харитама Санкиртана. And one who is empowered by the Lord, then they can propagate this chanting. А тот, кто наделен силой от Верховного Господа, может распространять это воспевание. Krishna Shakti, the energy of Krishna, that is the empowerment for propagating the Yuga Dharma. Кришна Шахти – это энергия Кришны, которая как раз дает силы для выполнения и распространения Юга Дхармы. So, of course, today being the glorious appearance day of our founder Acharya, his divine grace, Abhaycharan, Abhaycharan Aravinda, Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada, we can also say that true Prabhupada had this Krishna Shakti. He was empowered to propagate Krishna consciousness. Well, just like how was it possible that these cowherd boys could go every day with Lord Krishna into the forest of Vrindavan and play with him and, and be with him all day taking care of the cows and eat their food together? How could they enjoy Krishna's company? So the scriptures tell us that these cowherd boys had performed pious activities for many lifetimes. Krita punya punya. On account of their pious activities over many lifetimes, they had developed this qualification. In the same way, we can understand Srila Prabhupada also must have performed many pious activities over many lifetimes. He told us, he said, there was never a time that I forgot Krishna. Он говорил нам, что никогда не было такого времени, когда бы я забыла Кришну. We know that he took his birth in a Vaishnava family. So from the beginning of his childhood, he was hearing about Krishna, and he would see his father worship the deities of Radha and Krishna. Мы знаем, что он родился в вайшнавской семье, поэтому с самого детства он был окружен звуками святого имени он, а, и, и, и участвовал в поклонении божествам вместе со своим отцом. 
when his when he was a young boy, his father had had, had a, a bike learned to play the gamba. And Prabhupada told us, he said, while he was a young man, there was some plan. His mother was thinking that her son should go to the West and become a lawyer. But his father opposed. His father said, no, I don't want my son to become a worldly person, a materialistic minded person. So you can see it's a very nice family situation where the father is inclined to see the son become devotional. Too often today, the parents are inclined to encourage the child in their material endeavors. They think success in life is to be rich. No matter how you get the money, if you if you've got a lot of money, you're successful. Not long ago, I was talking to one lady, and she was telling me, "Oh, my daughter has some bad luck. She married a poor man." <laughs> this is what she considered bad luck. So people have no understanding of the importance of quality and character. So Prabhupada established this Krishna consciousness movement for this purpose, to help all of us to improve our qualities and our character. And Srila Prabhupada himself, as the founder Acharya, he was a man of the highest qualities and the, the best character. He said in his whole life he had never even tasted tea. So that kind of birth, it is understood that when someone takes birth in such a pious devoted family, it is not by chance, but it is due to that the, they must have been very advanced in already in their uh, in their qualities and in their character. Такого рода рождения очень благочестивой семьи преданных уже свидетельствует о том, что человек накопил множество благочестия. In the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna describes that if one has practiced yoga for a long time but still not quite successful, then they may take birth in the family of devotees. Such a birth is very rare in this world. Because immediately from the very birth, the child has the opportunity to continue in their Krishna consciousness. 
продолжает свою практику сознания Кришны. So she will Prabhupada not only had good qualities and character, but most important of all, he was a pure devotee of Lord Krishna. And he dedicated his life to distribute Krishna consciousness. He, he, as, as a young man, of course, he was in family life, but even at that time, he took the opportunity to associate with devotees. At the age, I think he was about, let's see, he was initiated in 19... 31, I think, or 30, maybe 33. And in his 30s, Srila Prabhupada was initiated. In 1944, he began back to Godhead. Who's wife was giving birth 
but having a miscarriage every time. So the Brahmana would come and complain to the king of Dwarka, to Maharaj Yukrasin, that this is your fault, you're supposed to protect me. Just like if we are attacked, if we have some, if we're not, if our homes are robbed, we can complain to the, 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 the government or the police that why is it like this? Why do you not protect me? So this Brahmana was challenging that you Kshatriyas are not doing a good job. You're supposed to be protecting us. When Arjuna heard this and he said, I, I vow that I will protect you. If I cannot protect your future children, I will give up my life. И Арджуна, услышав это, сказал, я даю обед, что если я не смогу защитить твоих будущих детей, то я расстанусь с жизнью. So when the wife, the Brahmana's wife became pregnant again and going to deliver a child, Arjuna was there and Arjuna was on guard and he was patrolling around the maternity house while she was giving birth. He did not want anything to happen. И когда жена Брахмана забеременела в очередной раз, Арджуна охранял их дом, и когда происходили роды, он также был возле дома, стараясь не допустить никакой беды. Арджуна не хотел, чтобы кто-либо забрал ребенка в Арджуна не хотел, чтобы кто-либо забрал ребенка в этот раз. Но вновь, когда ребенок родился, он каким-то чудесным образом исчез. So the Brahman was angry and said to Arjuna, you are useless, what kind of Kshatri are you? И Брахман сказал Арджуне, ты абсолютно бесполезен, что ты за Кшатри такой? Arjuna was puzzled. He set out to find the child. He went to Yamaraj to look for the child. He could not find it. И Арджуна взялся разыскать детей, отправился к Ямараджу, но не нашел их там. He searched all over the planet. He couldn't find it anywhere. И затем он стал рыскать по всей вселенной, но нигде не мог найти этого ребенка. So Arjuna was ready to give up his life because he had failed. И Арджуна уже приготовился расстаться с жизнью, потому что он не смог выполнить свое обещание. At that time, Lord Krishna came forward and told them, I will help you, you come with me. And they got on Lord Krishna's chariot, and Lord Krishna's chariot then went through the coverings of the universe and went to the causal ocean. And when they came into the Kashyu ocean, into the palace of Mahavishnu, and they saw Mahavishnu laying there. И приблизившись к причинам Махьяна, они вошли во дворец Махавишну и увидели, что он лежит там. And they saw all the babies of the Brahman which had been taken. И там же находились все младенцы этого дети Брахмана, которые прежде исчезли. Lord Mahavishnu had arranged to take away these children just so that Lord Krishna and Arjuna would come there to visit him. So it shows that even Lord Vishnu desires to have the darshan of Lord Sri Krishna. Это подтверждает, что даже Вишну мечтает увидеть Господа Кришну. 
Таким образом, можно сказать, что Вишну тоже является преданным Господу Кришне. Потому что он занимается служением Господу Кришне. So this is the supreme position of Krishna over everyone. Таково верховное положение Господа Кришны. Он выше всех. Any questions? So, 
Living entities are everywhere and everything. And in the past, we have also been in many different bodies. Sometimes we were way up there in the higher planets as demigods. And we come down and we, go, we can go right down into the lowest species of life, like these tiny germs and bacteria. You know, bugs, you know, little bugs, you know, they're also living entities. Therefore, we have to understand their life. We, we should not just simply kill them. We should respect other forms of life. И вот эти крохотные жучки это тоже живые существа, наделенные душой, и мы должны уважать их как живых существ и не должны убивать их. So we get that body on account of misuse of our independence when we go away from Krishna consciousness. А когда мы уходим от сознания Кришны и неправильно используем свою независимость, тогда мы можем получить вот такие тела. The more sinful and the more degraded we become, the lower the body we get. Чем греховней мы будем, тем ниже будет форма жизни, которую мы получим. When we're put into these terrible conditions of life. И нас поместят в ужасные условия жизни. But devotees want to be merciful. They want to try to give Krishna consciousness to everything. Но преданные милостивые, и они хотят дать сознание Кришны любым живым существам. And by chanting loudly the holy name, then these living entities can be, they can become fortunate. Услышав громкое распевание святого имени, святого имени, эти живые существа тоже могут обрести удачу. Вчера сказали, что причина того, что человек даже придя в общество бедное, не хочет прогрессировать, развиваться, не держится, что человек как бы спит. А что делать? What does one have to do to get rid of ignorance? One has to associate with devotees. You have to hear topics of Krishna. We have to clean the heart to take away the ignorance. We have to clean the heart, chanting the holy name, hearing again topics of Krishna, serving, doing service for Krishna. So ignorance doesn't have to be eternal. You don't have to remain ignorant. You have to take education. Невежество не должно длиться вечно. Вы не должны все время продолжать быть невежестве. Нужно получить образование. So this Krishna consciousness movement is giving all of us education. The education which we lack. Движение сознания Кришны предоставляет нам возможность получить образование, которого нам не хватает. We say from the beginning of life one should be educated. Prahlad Maharaj said, Komar Acharet Prakno Dharmam Bhagavatam Iha. From the age of five, a young boy, we should begin the education. Человек уже должен начинать получение духовного образования. 
but we are not so fortunate, we did not come so early in life. It becomes more difficult as we age, as we get older, it's more difficult to learn things. That's why children usually get education. It's much easier to teach people when they're young. And of course, some people, even we try to educate them, they don't learn. They don't, they're not able to absorb. It's like the tail of the dog. You know the tail of the dog? It, it's, it's curved. You try to straighten it and it goes back again. So some people are like that. We try to educate them and train them, but they go back again to their own. Why does that happen? Because of their material desire. They don't want to stop. They don't want to give up their material attachments. They don't want to surrender to Krishna. So that independence is always there. Every one of us have that choice, either Krishna or Maya. Where do you want to live? You can live in the kingdom of Krishna or you can live in the abode of Maya. Right? This kingdom of Maya, this is called Devi Dham. Right? It's under the control of Durga Devi. Durga Devi is controlling this Devi Dham. So her job is to punish us, to give us the miseries of material life. She carries her trident. In fact, they say everyone who carries that trident, they're giving you trouble. They're all here in this world. They're all in this kingdom of Maya. Durga, Shiva, Ganesh, they all have this trident. And they can give a lot of trouble to people. Now, in this life, uh, we came <coughs> directly from the spiritual world. 
We can have it. Well, originally, but that was a long time ago. We've been in the material world a long time. But it is said that originally we are all Krishna conscious. So when we fell into this material world, you know, we don't know, it was a long time ago. We're eternally conditioned, we're nityabhada, means we've been in this material world a very long time. Мы Well, the main thing you have to do to, to stay in Krishna consciousness is to stay Krishna conscious, to stay conscious of Krishna. You have to daily chant and you have to stay, you should stay in the association of devotees. Then it's much easier. We have to remain, we should give a, a, a favorable attitude in relation to devotees and Krishna consciousness. We should not be critical. We often find when people start to find fault with everything, then it's not good and, and you'll see they, eventually they end up just simply going away from Krishna consciousness. <laughs> They have so many complaints, so many criticisms. So we want to always keep a positive attitude and try to see our own faults and not to see faults in everybody else. Be critical of our own self. Don't just don't just criticize everybody, but criticize ourselves. Нужно критиковать себя и не критиковать всех подряд. And be faithful to the instructions of your spiritual teacher, particularly daily chanting and following four principles. А также нужно обладать верой в наставления своего духовного учителя и в частности каждый день воспевать и соблюдать четыре принципа. Problems with regulated principles. 
Well, what, why, why do people have problems? Material desires. They have very strong material desires. So sometimes people need to change their ashram. Sometimes that can solve sometimes the problem. Sometimes people, however, desire, you know, they may have had the habit of drugs and they want to go back to drugs, to take drugs again. Or somebody wants to drink, maybe they like drinking and they want to go back again and drink alcohol. So they go back to these kind of activities. Why did they do that? Because they didn't develop any taste for Krishna consciousness. They never tasted the, the holy name. Somehow their mind was always must have always been in the material platform absorbed in thinking of sense gratification. However, a fall down due to simply, simply for sense gratification is not as bad as somebody who falls down because of offenses. Но возврат просто к чувственным наслаждениям – это не так плохо, как уход из-за оскорблений. Анчамила был attached to sense gratification. He was sinful, but he was not offensive. Как Анчамила, например, он был греховен и погружен в материальные наслаждения, но он никого не оскорблял. So people who go away just simply for sense gratification, we often find after some time they will come back. And, but people who are offensive, some, sometimes they, they will take much longer before they come back. They will also, they also come back, but it takes more time. Srila Prabhupada himself, sometimes he would sit and have the devotees read Krishna book and they should read the Krishna book the whole day. When Prabhupada was in, ja when Prabhupada was in Japan one time with a few devotees, he had them sit up and they, and they had to read the Krishna book the whole day. So they didn't finish it. So at a certain point, Srila Prabhupada said, I will read it myself. Prabhupada took out his book with the Sanskrit verses and he read all the Sanskrit verses from the tenth, from the Srimad Bhagavatam. He meant to accomplish the whole book in, in one well, Krishna book, yeah, yeah. Read the whole book, yeah. Uh, 
Then again at New Vrindavan from Bhad Vazir for Janmas to go one time, they had them read Krishna for several hours. And this was Prabhupada's way of observing. But I saw in London Prabhupada would become give a lecture and we would have Kirtan the rest of the Some cultural programs <laughs> invite different important people to come and speak. Okay, Shri Prabhupada Ki, Shri Prabhupada Ki.